Hello everyone. I hope you are doing great. So welcome to this wonderful class of real time hair creation, which is Exen in Maya. But uh, as we know, hair is a very complicated part of our character creation. But uh, with a strong understanding of hair process and hair guides, this will be very easy and enjoyable process. So in this class, we will learn all about Exen and create our realistic hair particles. We will also learn about guides and uh, modifier, and we will talk about different workflows like. Uh, guide workflow and a tube workflow and uh, this will be very helpful to create uh, any realistic hair uh, before that uh, one question is coming in my mind is uh, have you noticed how hair works in games uh, as we know character has a solid base mesh so that we can easily animate in games but what about hair how do hair can animate and stimulate in games what are the hair format for game engines uh, in this video we will discuss all those questions so let's start with hair format uh, as you know character has a solid mesh so we can easily animate it but the point is hair also has a mesh hair also has a topology uh, because there are two format for hair like first a hair particle only like a interactive hair uh, it's like a thread like mesh and which store in a catch file format and this catch file format can stimulate in any real game engine environment so I will show you the full process don't worry about it just stay with me and the other and most important format is using hair cards in this format we create our hair using Exen and project it on our 2d plane using hair texture maps this is very interesting and very standard way to create hair so in this process uh, we create our hair cards and we place those cards on our character easily so that we can animate those hair cards with our character in game very easily so this is a way to create our hair so in this video first I will go through all the important tools and options to understand this Exen plugin then we will create our Exen groom and we will check all the parameters that we need to create our stunning room style we will also modify them we will get a setup for modifiers like uh, clumps cut noise and so many things so let's get started uh, the first important thing that we need to do is set up project file for Exen uh, because Exen will save its file in a specific folder structure and uh, if project is not set properly this will showing us an error so we need to go to a project window and create a new project here uh, these folder folders uh, will be created by default and uh, one extra file will create it its own folder called dot exen file and uh, this is very important because it tells Maya uh, where to put Maya here description files and connecting maps so now let's um, go uh, and uh, open exen editor window and uh, here I am clicking on my mesh and I am creating new description here you can see so before that the first most important thing is you have to check your UV your UV of the, your model the UV of your model should be in 0 to 1 space so if your UV is not in 0 to 1 space Exen will not work properly so make sure your model UV should be in 0 to 1 space now the other important thing to note is uh, your work is very specific about naming so for example uh, I always like to name my file uh, first and then keep it in a proper manner so it's feel mildly help to make a nice workflow so if I have create a groom so I name it head underscore exen and I create my groom here if someone else want to open my project model and want to import to my this exen groom in the model so it is very helpful to keep it organized with a name and a project file so here I'm doing a some important step to get a base mesh for my groom so I'm just separating some kind of head head cap and eyebrows kind of things so I'm just selecting these faces duplicate my mesh and deleting extra faces which were this this is a hair cap cap kind of where we have separate from my original mesh which is very important to create a groom because the in in to maintain a specific area this is a specific area where we groom can grow so all right uh, my model is ready now I'm going to create my description so here is a exen. Uh, I want to describe you to about this collection and description part. So here exen is like to organize its fight in uh, collection and descriptions. Uh, a collection can hold many descriptions in related to grooms. Uh, for example, 
if I create my model head groom so we will have our head groom and in this head model we have another part of grooming like eyebrows eyelashes beard and all uh, for all those there will be a different different descriptions so in this case let's call this head is a collection and head here is a description so now if I want to create another description under this same collection we would call it head eyebrows head eyelashes and hide head uh, uh, beard and so on so the collection is a kind of group of a different description so now uh, this is created now we can choose what kind of primitive we are made of this description so I could be either splines which is for a long hair or it could be a groomable spines but here uh, we are creating long hair for my hairstyle so we are using this guide workflow so we are selecting for a long hair and uh, I'm just click create and OK uh, now just we have to save this file because otherwise we lose everything now here is a one thing to notice uh, here we have a saved in dot mov file which is our Maya file that is okay but uh, with this exit creation this dot exit file is also saving here you can see uh, which is our file which control all the information about our groom collection and descriptions so this file is very important so as you can see on the right side of exit menu uh, you can manage your uh, uh, exit descriptions uh, like uh, description add description delete description and any so many other options so now if I want to import my last hair collection into project so for that just go to exit editor and here is an option called import collection and description and go to this collection tab and just navigate your dot exit file so just navigate that location and click open now you can import your you can see we have our previous hair collection all the description and collection file here so this is why this is very important to create a project file and set up project file first before starting any groom project because Maya has created is dot exit file randomly and this is working in a hierarchy manner set of groups are created in a exit file for our collection and description so this is very important so now we have our group set up because uh, there is our guide workflow and we need to create our guides to see some hair and fur kind of things. So let's go through our interface and understand what the Exin plugin doing. So just check out this Exin interface. So to add a guide just press this plus button and click on our head mesh so we can create a guide. So if you want to move this guide from here to here so just press that uh, same plus button and hold control key and uh, left mouse button click and drag so it will move uh, my guides okay then uh, if I have this uh, guide selected and I just click right mouse button so I see this kind of interface and I have so many options like move guide tool copy and paste guide shapes so if I click on copy guide shapes then I click the other guide shape so and paste that uh, shape here so you can copy and paste uh, a guide shape and size to another guide also so this is very useful tool so if you want to mirror your guide just select these guide or uh, select all of these and uh, if you want to mirror these two just click on the mirror guide and it will mirror across the x-axis then if you want to lock some guides just click on this lock and you cannot move them anymore so this is locked so if you want to scale them so just scale is just a uh, like a Maya scale tool just scale for press E for scale R for rotate so if uh, you also convert these guide to Maya curves so this is very important just see your utility option here so uh, this is a guide to curve so just select these guides and convert into a curves so you can also reverse it also guide to curve curve to guide so this is very handy tool so you can select either in uh, hide them keep them or delete them so I go for hide and uh, I click it useful option so I create curve and uh, create into the curve here and you can also do the reverse so if you have a curve and convert them into a guide so this is very useful to moving when your project is moving from different softwares when you are working with your team and they are uh, transfer your model from one software to another software so it, this is very handy to convert your guides into curves and curves into guides 
so now moving on I just click this and add some more guides then uh, this is a visibility tool this kind of eye icon so you can click click on this to visible or invisible your guides so this is just a basic tools to use, uh, use in my workflow like slurp, move, copy, paste, flip and do the mirror and so many things. So there are so many options here you can check out by yourself and uh, gain experience uh, just go through it and, and here is a button for uh, add a new description you can create a new description. So these are the main tools uh, with your guides and exam so for a good preview or a, for a good shade so i usually turning off this tube shading option here i need to just turn off so let's reduce the width and uh, it look nicer so i'm just playing with my options like uh, width taper length of a guide and so on so let's increase the density so this kind of grooming uh, looks like so let's add more guides uh, over the surface to get little more denser or a uniform placement. So this is nice workflow you can see. So just adding more guides it will averaging out with respect to your exit exiting guides. So here we have a guide setup. So let's look at these parameter here. So let's moving on and this is a create a mask. So we have to click on this small triangle here. And these option of creating mask so you can use your expression editor to mask also but here we need to create a map so let's create a map and okay just give a name to your mask and uh, let me call it head mask and this is a map resolution uh, which is 20 and I select this uh, color of my mask so just remember this is a color code black color means uh, no hair there is no hair over black colors and white color means there is a visibility of hair also itself so let's now masking i use masking and i click create now it goes to our maya paint tool here so where you can paint things using brush so you can paint your mask where you want to create hair or not so this is very handy tool so we can paint the masking area let paint a black color and now we will paint white inside it and uh, the thing to notice is uh, even we have painted this black and mask but it is not apply on the mesh right now uh, this is because every time you click on a create mask option uh, it's, it still does not apply to the map because in this interface which is our maya paint tool it will create a dot ff file so which is a texture file so we have to save this texture file first so I have created this texture file now I'm saving it but uh, it does not done anything here right now because the file needed to convert to a vtex file first for my exit so we have to save this here and uh, my exit window uh, we have to click on this save button uh, this kind of uh, hard uh, floppy kind of icon so we have to save this for my exit tool window here so click on this save button here so it says uh, paintable texture map bake the vtex map and so if I click on this uh, you have to apply the mask on this and masking texture map here so you have to save this on the both places first the texture window you have to save the texture and on the exit tool window you have to uh, save your texture file so when you click on this save button now we have our mask preview and uh, this kind of primitive type of spines it controlling our using uh, guides so the modify CVs are the number of CVs so if you want to increase the more complicated hairstyle or a more dense hair so you need to move more CVs you need to more CVs so for a get a specific shape or size so let's going into the detail for a length of a spines so it's the best to keep match with your guides itself the the, the length of a guide and length of a hair should be match should be equal so uh, if it not equal so it is not good to have the hair longer than a guides because then it's unguided or it difficult to manage and control their shapes and size so it always goes to have a guide and hair 
should be in same length so and here uh, this is a width of ramp ramp width this indicates the width of a hair from root to tip so for those here with the thicker at base and thinner at uh, top this is your root hair r for root and t for tip so here you here you can draw the ramp for your hair hair look like so you also have you also have this taper option so uh, there are so many option here you can check by yourself and experience and gain experience with that just spend some time and play with it now just moving down this is a reason mask the reason mask are useful for creating party maps uh, just use for a partition of here it means so if i create this partition of here so it will follow the guides so now these are very important uh, in our digital grooms uh, because we usually have some kind of parting in my, in our hairstyle so in also the hairstyle we want to create a special reason and parting your hair direction flow so that this is very useful for example uh, if we move these guide apart and uh, i'm using my scrub brush to give us a specific direction and move these guide uh, on uh, both side so now we want to create this hair partition but here uh, you can see uh, our hair is mesh out and it averaging out of the air so we cannot clear partition here we cannot create a clear partition here so for that we use this reason mask uh, click on this create mask and go for tool setting and uh, this will open a paintable texture map now if i paint it and again you have to save it on both side so save on this icon and save this now this has created our partition of hair so in which hair is falling so this is very helpful reason map to clear uh, right now so let's moving on with the interface of exin so this is what the reason map does and um, this is very used to animation of any creating your dynamics so this is very useful workflow now uh, if if we are going to preview my this output window so preview is basically the preview of your group so here i am previewing is 100% but uh, if you are very very dense room and uh, it's showing your file down slowing your file down or maybe your system is not that good so you have to just decrease your preview percentage just showing it showing the 10% of your 100% on your hand render image so this is just a preview window just moving on so i'm just selecting my render to r node render and now i'm going to the modifiers so this is very important and we have we created groom using these guides and the direction of groom is controlled by this guides but everything else done by the modifier only so the modifier are very important for exin so let's start and this is very interesting so let's uh, delete everything here so i'm just going to delete my guides and i'm doing again so just select the guide and click delete and i want to create a new setup so you can consider it for every click so i create a guides so we have this let's preview it so this is enough for me to work with modifiers so now let's move it with the modifiers so for a perfect groom style there are some parameters that we have to work on like length density clumping noise and cutoff so these are the most important five modifiers we will work on so let's begin with and start with clumping so if you click on this plus button and it will open a modifier window so there are lots of thing here but uh, most important thing is clumping right now so i just click on clumping and generate uh, you can see uh, nothing is showing off uh, this is because we need to create a clumping map setup so there are multiple ways to see that and there are two kind of uh, maps of setups like generate clumps and guide clumps so it will generate uh, first is generate clump it will generate clumps on a surface based on the density and the mask of uh, and uh, the guide will create a clump um, at a uh, on the basis of guide direction at the tip tip of a guide so it's like a guide clumping to guide so we will do each of these and uh, see how they are different to each other so let's start with one click and click on generate so we will define this density to generated clumps so now um, that uh, we have these generating spikes you can see this kind of yellow spikes over a surface 
and uh, I just press save and OK. Now when you save them you can see my clump mask it start clumping to this spikes and uh, here the clumps my mask and I just know that it is kind of global control of this clumping. So now on this panel you can see the clump uh, graph you can uh, manipulate the from root to tip and we can manage our clumping variation. So uh, in this clumping we have also a noise effect and there are also many options like curl, uh, noise effect and it would be go for the noise effect is a very important one. So we can do and manipulate these kind of options. So to get uh, more details we have to increase this CV count just go uh, go to my preview and increase my CV count to 15 which help us to uh, maintain these kind of details and folds. So if I select our guides and then rebuild this is very important. So these tools are important and to get to rebuild and we will rebuild the guide uh, to my new CV count which is I 15 I set to 15 and I can sculpt my guide very smoothly here. So now I have more control to my guides and modifier here. Now here you can see I have another option like uh, add a noise and uh, maybe reduce it or from the tip because uh, if I have so many noise at the base and uh, the something the shape is very not very clear and so uh, noise at the top is uh, really helpful. Now this is our noise you can check and play with these options and uh, just experiment all this and play with this option to gain an experiment experience with this uh, uh, values so now moving on uh, this is our clump so let's try setting up our clump using guides campaign so again go to setup maps and select guide option now you can see each clump stands is overlaid to the guide for follow up so this this is pointing to the guide direction so this is very helpful for a long hairstyle where we want to sculpt in an exact and specific flow direction. This is very useful. So that uh, this is clumping. Now if we want to create this small clump inside this big clump. So this setup is very useful. So now uh, I'm going to say it's uh, this clump and we set it to this higher generated density. So you can see it's breaking the bigger clumps into smaller clumps and uh, they are still uh, pumping to this guided point and pointing to this direction so this is exactly what we want for our reference so now again uh, if we will also add a noise effect here so so that they are not exactly the same so let's check this option uh, here is uh, on this bottom color preview so the color preview will be like a color which gives you a, a each of your clumps differently and it will be nice choice to check this kind of variation. So it's good to check and uh, to differentiate kind of clumps. So just keep checking. There is a advantage of this color preview option. Now moving on with a noise modifier. So this broke up clumps completely and uh, with a fine balance between these and this is very important the right kind of chrome to keep a balance of noise and clumps so it did give a, a hair look more realistic so the clumps will be always try to keep things uh, on a point and this kind of noise is always trying to break things away from this point so we want it to be a balance it so balance between clumps and noise so this is very nice parameter it has two parameter has a frequency and a magnitude so um, uh, uh, for the frequency uh, it's like a wave so if it's going up and down so it's how many of these peaks uh, we have in the frequency so basically if I put this frequency really high so that uh, we can getting more number of waves and uh, uh, if we reduce this density it is easier to see now let's reduce it and now you can see we have these curves and uh, so the frequency and the higher the number more the curls you can see so if we have this smaller number you get a very gentle waves and this is what I mean with the lower frequency noise you can see here so the frequency is important it works with your CV count so if you don't have enough CV you don't really have a number of frequency and you it never shown up 
so i think this is good for a magnitude so we have the waves and then uh, how high and low to the peak we uh, decided with the magnitude settings now for these two parameter i always try to put this into a expression and uh, give a little variation control with the value slider so we will go for this expression later but uh, just to understand this uh, kind of parameter let's do this noise so now uh, just give a little bit break up to my uh, clumps so we see here there is a stands and not exactly the same length so to get this effect we have to get a cutoffs so to add a cutoffs modifier uh, it will cut my hair in a uneven manner and give a realistic look to click so just click on this cut modifier so here cut modifier has an expression you can see and is uh, and it's saying uh, length from tip and related to this cutoff it's from 0 to 0 0.2 and uh, this is adding that breakup uh, in my groom you can see here now if i want to even more breakups uh, i can change this number and now it's going to more extreme cuts so now we have my cuts from 0 to 1 and 0 to 2 or many more so now this is how it much cutting off and uh, now let's test some expressions now click on this small symbol yeah and i click here so this is our expression window look like um, now the expression editor is very powerful and easy to add and check different values in a very in a, a very wide range so you can do a lot of cool things with that so let's take an example let's uh, do a little expression so for example in this case uh, for cut i need a minimum and maximum value so let's define this uh, variable so to define this variable i use this uh, dollar shine and dollar min value cut so this dollar sign mean that it is a variable and which is equal to assign the value which is i'm going to value is 0 0.1 and in this actual expression editor uh, we always end with line with semicolon so when you do semicolon you can see this is created a value uh, up here and uh, this is preview the value range so just add a hashtag to add a comment now uh, you can define the minimum and maximum value for the parameter now make sure there is no gap between the value and semicolon here so just call your minimum and maximum value uh, in their random function so i will multiply with this my c length so now here c length is the length of my hair stands or hair guides so by doing this i am just changing these value to the percentage of my hair length uh, because it's difficult to guess what is the length of our strain length so these number can just go uh, really randomly and will be multiply the percentage of my hair length so it's like 80 percent of my length means 0 0.8 multiply by 0 0.8 and if i it is 10 percent of my length so i will multiply with 0 0.1 so just click on the accept and now you can see we have these two slider and amount of uh, value ranging now with this stuff you can easily and increase and decrease and manipulate the minimum and maximum value of your cut so you can easily visualize on your screen and easily manipulate the value of preview uh, how is changing so it is good to know the how cutting is uh, a lot of in percentage of really really careful so this is very interesting so let's now start putting the same kind of expression with my noise magnitude so just copy this expression and uh, go to my um, cut expression and select cop uh, control c to copy and uh, i'm coming back to my noise magnitude expression tab and control v to uh, paste my expression so here i'm just changing this some kind of variable uh, to noise mag minimum noise uh, magnitude and just add a second seed noise magnitude as well here you can see now change this variable function also and hit apply so you can see here if you don't like to particular effect so much so this is natural and full control uh, is changing the value is slider so this kind of value slider you can easily manipulate and you can see the exact value what is good for your groom and not
so that's we apply this kind of other modifier also like clumps and curl to any parameter frequency you can use it anywhere so this is all about expression code and modifier i hope you are like it so this is we can manipulate easily so in this way you can create uh, modifiers and create your realistic hairs so uh, let's move it so let's looking at a difference between stand guide workflow and tube workflow so basically guide workflow start from a stand level and it start from a strength shapes and we build it into a clubs then we apply a modifiers then uh, we get our big shapes so it's more into in to out but in a tube workflow uh, the overall shape the big shape the big clump is done first and then we go for overall shape and that we need it and we set up a groom and then modify our strength so it's more like outside in so there is no good or bad way but both are different workflow so both have their own strength and both work well with a certain cases so let's take an example uh, let's first look at a standard guide workflow so in this workflow for example if i to create this hairstyle uh, i would start to creating a guide and then I start sculpting a shape of uh, this much and uh, just first hairstyle of shape for my head. So to get a perfect shape of, of hair, so I'm just adding guides and I start uh, manipulating these shapes by sculpting it. So I just add stands as per my guides and try to get a good shape. So basically there are workflow to do with the keep adding lots of guide to get a special shape of my hairstyle. So and I will keep sculpting so this look nicer now and I'm happy with this hairstyle and I am turn on my hair you can see. So I would start adding my modifiers and maybe I start with add clumpings then I will start testing this size of my clumps and uh, let's make a bigger clumps first. So I will just uh, start testing all these uh, after my stand guides are ready to set up. So if I do modify anything in this workflow, so then I have to select this guide and then sculpt each of these and make my changes. So if my guides are set up and then we need to update my guides. So just go to this clumping and this is our preview change. Now I click on this. Now it's updating because you can see uh, these trends are going up like that and uh, it just because it's so close th that's why it's following these guides. So let's uh, move this away. So it's basically it's work for you and I'm working moving my guide as guide per guide. So you're getting something like this and you are sculpting your guides again. So you can see the change of clumping size and you can modify very easily. So we are starting from these strands and going towards the big shapes. So on the other hand, let's construct this method for our groom workflow. In this groom workflow, uh, you start to creating set of curves and uh, which would like to shape uh, like a tube. And when you're using this tube in Axin, or uh, we will create our guides it, uh, inside it and which will look like this. You can see here the guides are set in within this tube. Now these guides are not manually placed. These uh, guides are generated uh, automatically. So uh, that's it very simplify our workflow so that you can see this workforce to look at a big and exact shape as you wanted. So uh, and this make this process very easier. So just do this simulation and or animation because you have uh, your big shapes very clearly and you just make a structure of this group very clean so many times just add uh, guides and uh, you just uh, uh, mesh up with the jungle of guides so it's very confusing so with the help of this tube workflow your guides are well mannered well structured way you can manage your guides in a very structured way and uh, then your guides are automatically set in a proper manner with this uh, tube workflow so in this workflow now uh, if i have to make changes then there are two ways to doing it first is you have to just take these curves and uh, uh, what the tubes are independent on so just to move and edit these curves 
and uh, you can uh, always modify them so they can still live and make the method very powerful so just select this curve and go to this control vertex and now you can easily move and change your position of this tube so now once you move your tube uh, your shape will be like this so now if i have to update it so it's very simple just go to tube and update my tube again here you can see and uh, these guides are updating and uh, in this new shape now because we have this guide clumping setup and we do have to update this guide as well so to get these changes uh, you can see in my fur or hair i am following this shape so i think it just increase the number of cvs to make this uh, follow so uh, uh, in this way we work with the tube workflow so we just changing the tubes and update the guides so here we don't need to separate our individual guides or making the changes uh, you can still do this but uh, uh, we have to do a better way to do this but uh, you can still individual select the guides and move it but this is not a good way uh, as you can uh, if i accidentally select something else or some other guides it will going to be mesh so if i want to move this whole clump so there is no easy way to do it just select one things and then uh, do one copy guides uh, shape and then based on this uh, guide shape in our workflow we want ready to sculpt in individual guides so we will using only a tube curves and this tube here so uh, we will only be changing our tube curves and uh, i can turn on this tube so that uh, you can see them so you will only be working with this tube curve and then we will just updating our guides in act in this action so that will be make a very workflow very clean so i hope that would be understood and uh, there are difference between of these two workflow so let's moving on with our next uh, example so let's start with how we create this tube and uh, how to work in a tube workflow here so we will going through the so we will going through this uh, tube workflow and uh, how to create a tube and how to import uh, into this action so for the tube workflow uh, we will creating a tube using polygon primitive cylinder a simple take a cylinder and the tube and action is important correctly so action need their uvs so make sure the cylinder has a in 0 to 1 uv pip, uv alignment so what i mean by that uh, if i select this uv and based on this cylinder here the we select this top uv to 1 and uh, uh, this is the top of a cylinder and uh, this is how the uv is laid out in this job so make sure the uv is laid out in a 0 to 1 plane so all right uh, so uh, other thing we need to do is to workflow is the cylinder needs to have uh, enough subdivisions that we can wrap correctly uh, to the curve so this will be using and make sure the cylinder should be open from top to bottom the cap should be deleted so if i go to faces and i need to set up this okay, and uh, we will create this curve so when you create this curve and uh, the curve need to be created uh, from root to tip so when you start creating the curve it has to start at a base of a head and then it go to the top uh, now if we have look at this you can see uh, i have this pivot point curve at the setting at the origin but in our workflow it is here if the pivot point is my first cv of my curve so just move this pivot point to the first cv of my first curve so to do this i have my script here you can just you can also do it by manually to edit the pivot point and move this to the first cv of your curve but with this script this will be very easy so just select the curve and go to the script editor and paste this script and just up, press apply now you can now you can see my pivot point is set to the first cv of my uh, head point so you can copy this and use it now we will see the pivot is moved to first cv of my curve and this is very useful because in this workflow if you have to move this curve 
so this is very handy to move at a starting point so the curve is ready and the cylinder is also ready so we all to need is to curve wrap curve wrap uh, what I mean is I'm going to wrap my cylinder uh, to my curve so just select the calendar uh, cylinder sorry and uh, select the curve so we are going to deform and go to wrap you can see now there are you can see uh, it's not really match correctly so we need to change some alignment to Y and we need to turn off uh, the keep length so now it's looking like a tube you can see here so then go to a scale curve graph and uh, we change the tip scaling and change the base scaling little bit and giving us some kind of tube and uh, some kind of curves clumps of shape now it's looking like a uh, uh, our tube and that we are used in our exit so now uh, our tube is ready so once we have this we can easily go to other tubes but uh, just to make sure this uh, process faster uh, I have some script to make this flow very clear and fast uh, that is uh, when we add a next tube uh, let's create uh, it's by using script so I have made this kind of script so make sure uh, make sure our subdivisions are 16 and horizon and a cap and base are 0 and this delete the gap between the base so this is a script of to get a uh, my cylinder so here it is I have made this button for this just click on this and we create a curve this uh, there is no shortcut to create a curve so you have to follow the regular method just go to curve and uh, draw your curves and select the curve wrap and run this one now make this shape so this is a little faster now make it more faster to just do it to we are going to select this tube and select our curve and uh, I'm going to edit and go to edit uh, duplicate special so with this option make sure duplicate input graph is turned on and uh, we duplicate uh, uh, special now this is made of uh, another uh, curve and tube now we are going to select all and do another duplicate special here and just move those apart here just moving my do those duplicate uh, special tube to this side so now here we have a uh, series of curve and uh, we go to vertex control vertex and we can move around of the nicer shape so just add this tube uh, uh, just into a new layer so that it make easier to see the other other things so now uh, we can just select our curves and make easier to get shape that we like so I can rotate this kind of little bit more and uh, scale uh, there as well so the thing is uh, I want to add this kind of shape again so this one and these two also and again I'm going to do this duplicate special and move this up now maybe I want to move my CVs in little bit up and uh, duplicate also so here in the tube workflow it is a most important that tube should be uh, non interact with each other make sure the tube are separate and have a specific space between each other so let's make sure our tube are not intersecting and we should make sure it does not intersect yeah even at the base or uh, try to keep the base very clean as possible because basically these tube are going to tell exin uh, where to build our uh, guides so if two of them intersecting the guide the guide placement will be very get a mesh up so just select the CV curves and scrub those guides give a shape as you like so now uh, I do like this and this works so I do want to make this on the both side to just give a, a specific volume so I select all these tubes and do another duplicate special and I select these curves move them aside and I get the another layer here you can see now which is I like I'm doing to scale them very little down and little bit here so we are going to uh, take care of no intersection is going on so keep those tube apart now 
once I have this I'm going to select them and uh, I do last select my duplicate special and I will move this curve to the other side of my head also now let's just see how it's looking and I think this is good enough I can see the sum of this not intersecting with my spear but uh, I could be this problem so let's select those curves and set those to the base of the spear and pull them down here so uh, now we have this tube set up and uh, at this point I am happy to shape this tube also so I just group them and I find a better give organize in a proper manner and uh, just put them into uh, my tube group and we have this tube group and a curve tube separate so now putting this together in exon now the first we created our group for exon yeah, using our exon tab and we create our description here now we will call this a hair test yeah you can name at uh, anything and we will use this placing to uh, shipping guides so we are creating our groups and our groups is created now but uh, nothing is showing off because there is no guide cur uh, currently so to create guides so we will go through this tube group action here you can see so it says construct guides so add this reason map uh, from polytubes representation of volume of this group um, here we have a we are tubes and it's the uh, advantage to grouping these tube so this is the advantage we group my tube separately so you can easily select them here uh, click on this small white triangle and uh, these tubes are collected now now the guide shaping is like within this tube now what should be the spacing between the guide in uh, it determined by this density so the bigger the number fewer the guides if you increase the number guides uh, guides number of guides is lesser so if it's smaller the number means the spacing is less so that there are more guides to fit in so the density will be increased with this guide so just take a test button to use uh, useful to click on the test button and go for the wireframe just check the how much uh, guides can be created in this tube so if I do this test button it's showing me it showing me the small plus white button like this this kind of small by white dots so this is a place where guides will be placed so now um, if I change this spacing and test again so this will be see the main change this and so uh, more and more guides can created so higher the number is lesser the guides so I think the 0.5 is good enough so here is the CV frequency uh, it is CV of my guide and here a textual per unit uh, is a resolution and the cut parameter to add variation so we just leave, leave it as default now moving on we are going to just click on generate it yeah nice and now this is ready now our, our guides are generated so it has uh, polluted uh, with my fur and hair as well because now we can see our here so let's for now uh, hide and uh, here start my guides now let me pull this up uh, as you can see now how this tube are controlling my guides are placement and this this is uh, especially good for stylize, uh, stylize here uh, this is really useful because a uh, force uh, uh, you to think about the bigger shape to start with and then you'd get a nicer clean guides so this can be easily and manipulate easily to manipulate so you can still control these using curves so they are still alive so if I pick one of these curves and go to uh, control vertex and move this curve around so I will change this all the need to do is just make the change to exit and go to tube groom and then I'm going to just put this again so now just delete the last tubes and click on this triangle again so you will add all those editable tubes curve here so this is a way to uh, to change your vertex or size shape of the tubes and now uh, then generate again now you can see it snapped in 
so it's really very fast and useful and this kind of hairstyle if i find this very great way of working uh, so let's look at our hair so the hair are uh, populating in an area uh, where we don't want it you can see it's going out so for that just masking it just paint a mask so to create a map uh, resolutions we could just keep it 20 and uh, start color with black created now because black means no hair so i'm going to paint my mask so just quickly use a paint tool and paint a mask in the area where we want our fur or hair and uh, this is a standard exon workflow as you we also doing this so once you get into exon the tube workflow is actually the very simple to guide workflow because we get our guides here and we are still working with our exon interface so we still need to create this clumps curl and noise modifier and all some or everything is the same so now we save this texture and go to exon and we start it here so now uh, our fur and hair is polluted in this masking area so we can increase this density of this one and we can reduce uh, the width or input the ramp of this graph and the, all the parameter and the options are same as per the last guide workflow so now we can go to our modifier and add some clumps and add some modifier here now all these operations are same as a, as a modifier and guides clump setups so i also like to set up one more level of clumping uh, which is one smaller clump within the bigger clump so this is one of the higher density so i click on this generate blunt button so this is a density of those and uh, you can save it now uh, you can see uh, it's breaking through now you can see how it clumping it within this clump uh, you don't need to increase my cv counts to get uh, uh, more details now if we go through our clumps and see how dividing bigger clumps into a smaller clumps uh, it is very important to maintain a noise with an, a lower frequency noise so let me put into the expression here minimum and maximum value for my noise variation now just play with this value and uh, option of exon just get a perfect result now we could also add a night and all kind of stuff but it's enough to give uh, an idea what the hair tubes workflow look like this is how we maintain and uh, create our workflow and uh, now we are ready to begin with our main hairstyle now we are starting our hair cards creation process and generate hair maps in maya using our node uh, so for now thank you so much for watching and please subscribe this channel because you are going to get a lots of things and keep learning keep in touch thank you so much have fun take care